Hey, wonderful person. We're back here talking about narcissists. And today we're going to talk about the inevitable leaving the narcissist and what that looks like at the lead up. And what are the cycles that go through? What's the pattern there with the narcissist? There's a pattern. There's a pattern that they do and a pattern that you dance with them on with narcissism. But before we get into that, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Also subscribe. We're getting the message out on narcissism. Eventually, everybody in the world is going to know about narcissism and can avoid narcissists. Wouldn't that be great? Maybe to even to the point where narcissists know that they're narcissists and they try and seek help for it instead of inflicting their uh, nastiness on other people and society in general. Right. So let's get on to it. So the time has come to leave the narcissist. How, <laughs> how are they going to feel about that? Well, you know how they're going to feel about that. How do they feel about most things? They get angry. They name call. They don't like it. Even if the narcissist has suggested it. Maybe dozens of times before. Maybe you're married to a narcissist and a narcissist keeps saying they're going to get a divorce for 30 years now. <laughs> you just never went through with it. If they're doing that, uh, they're just those threats are just there to keep you in line and keep you from uh, threatening their narrative and their point of superiority that they like to feel, right? Uh, it has nothing to do really about leaving. And sometimes even if we're leaving the narcissist for a short amount of time, they can have a, a bit of a breakdown over it. So let's say you're in a, um, you're going on a vacation. It's two weeks. Hey, let's say that it, it, it could be a vacation where you leave. It could be where they leave. It could be where they're gone for two days. Uh, it could be where they go off to work or you go off to work and they stay home or something like that. The issue of leaving the narcissist because the narcissist has left so many, been left by so many people, has burned through so many relationships they don't like it. They have a, a terror, an existential terror about it. So you're, let's say where you're there ready to go on a two week vacation to some fancy city or country, right? And they've paid a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars for this trip. So it's like they really want to go and, and they've been looking for this trip for all their life. Right. So in a healthy relationship, in a healthy person, you, you'd see this enthusiasm climbing and climbing and climbing and nervousness, too. As they get closer to the day, they're packing their bags, they're, they're making sure all the things are right. And they got all the stuff and they got their itinerary and it, it's, a, it's an international trip. So they make sure they got their passport. They make sure they got their IDs. They make sure they got their money, their clothing, all the stuff. Right, and they're, it's ah, they're just they're just so excited to go. Not so with the narcissist, because they're so afraid of uh, being totally abandoned by people because they have been in the past so many times, and they expect it to be in, again in the future. Uh, they don't feel safe in society like we do. They see the world as a hostile place, and everybody's out to get them. So. They see this as a possible forever situation. And they also see you as an extension of themselves, kind of like their arm, honestly. And so when you go or when they go, it's like a severing of a part of what they are. I know it doesn't make sense, but this is how they feel about it. They, they, and they don't know why they feel about it this way. I'm going to button my shirt now. It's hot here today. It's 91 degrees. <laughs> Uh, they don't know why they feel about it. So that that's a whole nother issue. Now they have these confused feelings about abandonment and hostility and should they have keeping it in and and all this other stuff. Not on the trip that they spent thousands of dollars to go on. And as it gets closer to the departure date, whether they're leaving or you're leaving it or it's short, or whether they, you know, it doesn't really matter. Their hostility, their anxiety is going to keep going up and up 
until they leave. And usually, so let's say this is this is also a good one. Um, so usually when you go on vacation, again, the normal situation, you go on vacation, right? It's just, and this last day you go on vacation and your family kind of throws you a last dinner celebration. Ooh, this is the night before your, your, your big vacation. Wow, this is going to be exciting. You have a big dinner. Yeah. And you take pictures and, and you post it on Facebook and I can't wait. And these are the places I'm going to visit and all that stuff. And, and maybe even, so you go to the, the airport probably early in the morning and it's it's all exciting and you hug and you're crying maybe and is and I'll miss you and I know and you know don't make me cry yes it's all good and more hugs and okay that's normal I have to refresh you on normal um, this is the and here comes the narcissist world so the narcissist is getting more and more agitated as you get closer to departure time. And you'll notice that the arguments and hostility and you'll feel the thickness in the air around the narcissist as it gets closer and closer, more heaviness uh, for the narcissist as it gets closer to uh, the time of the trip until the last day they're going to be having arguments almost guaranteed they're going to have arguments it doesn't have to, it'll be about the silliest stuff or it'll be about stuff that's completely made up completely bs because they have all this anxiety in them and they feel like they're going to explode unless they say something and they want to explode onto you and they have they feel this entitlement to do that to explode onto you and you're supposed to just take it and the next day you're supposed to it's supposed to be like it they forgot about it and you know I'm I'm going on my trip. The, the, right. Oh there's a trip to the airport in the morning. You remember the, the normal trip, there was some maybe some tears and a lot of hugs and maybe some pictures and stuff like that. And some good times before they left to say goodbye. You know, they want it to be special before they they leave. This is not how the narcissist usually leaves on a vacation. There is a lot of stress beforehand. They're disorganized usually. They lost their passport. Now they're looking for it. There's a lot of cursing and swearing and throwing stuff. Where is the passport? Did you see it? How come you didn't see it? How come you didn't tell me where it is? How come you didn't remind me to, to, to look for this and straighten up everything last night? <laughs> right? All right. They get everything together. Now it's a big ball of stress. Now you pile into the car, you're probably 10, 15 minutes late. And you know, nowadays they tell you to be at the airport at a certain time. I think it's an hour or two hours before the departure time. Uh, or they just leave you and you leave, lose all your money. I have seen a narcissist do that. <laughs> they don't listen to rules. That's another thing. So uh, we, we don't have to get into rules. That's a whole other ball of wax. <laughs> So this time they're they're going to be early, but they are now late because they're disorganized. This is sort of like their relationship pattern, right? Love, hate, on, off, push away, pull back. And uh, it's going to be like that with everything because we have relationships with everything. They have a relationship with this trip and it's, it's push-pull. It, relationship with you, it's push-pull. And uh, right, the, the normal person was all go. They were all packed and they were looking forward and the amount of warm and fuzzy feelings just kept increasing and the nervousness too. But not with the narcissist. It's push-pull. They packed. They lost stuff. They went. It was crazy the, the morning before. On the way to the airport, they had a big blowout argument about st stupid stuff where there was screaming and yelling in the car on the way to the airport at 5 in the morning or something like that. And finally, they get to the airport and, you know, you don't want to have a warm, huggy, uh, warm and fuzzy thing. It's basically like, go. Yeah. That's it with the narcissist. It's this push-pull, uh, love-hate relationship with everything and with you, too. So instead of having big hugs and kisses and maybe some tears at the airport, even just for two weeks, a lot of families are like this. Not with a narcissist. By the time you get to the airport, you'll be so good. And so you'll be, you'll sing on the way back in the car because they're gone. And that craziness that they had is over. 
at least for another two weeks, you can live in sanity and peace, finally. For another two weeks till they come back. And then, and then that's a whole nother thing we won't get into right now, but we'll get into it in a minute. <laughs> because that's part of the cycle. That's all part of the cycle. It's push-pull, push-pull. Because when they come back, let's go there. When they come back, the normal family. Normal family. Oh, you know the normal family. They come back. Oh, we're so glad you're back. Oh, you look so good. Oh, you got a tan. This is fantastic. I can't wait to see your pictures. There's hugs. There's kisses. There's, there's pats on the back. It's so good. To, can I take your suitcase? Can I take your suitcase? I got that. I got that. More, 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 more. Kisses, kisses, right? Only for two weeks. Now we go to the narcissist world. <laughs> you may have some of that on the on the way back, right? But it'll be tampered down because of a lot of things with narcissists. There's push and pull. And the person that lives with the narcissist probably isn't that grateful to see them come back, right? Because they know, here we go, the circus starts again. So it's kind of, it's just some, well, oh, it's so great to be back. It's almost like they were, you know, gone for one day and they get in the car and they come back and, and everybody goes to sleep and they wake up the next day and the next day they're kind of cold to the whole situation. It's it's kind of like they were cold the whole situation. Like they're not, they're happy to be back and they say they're happy to be back. They're happy to be in their own bed, their own life and their own situation. But that's it. That's where it goes. That's, that's as much as you're going to get from a narcissist, usually. If you get that. Uh, because they're back here again. And now the continuation of that in the next couple of days you're going to have an argument, a big argument with the narcissist. Why? Because the narcissist has all this anxiety. They haven't been able to, usually they haven't been able to get out all out of their anxiety over the two weeks that they've been away. You know, and they feel like they're going to burst if they don't get it out. So they're ready to get it out. Also, because they feel that you let them leave and made them feel like, um, they were going to be abandoned by everybody like like because you're a part of them. So they had all these uncomfortable feelings of abandonment and rejection and uh, severing of relationships. They, didn't, they, don't, they don't feel comfortable with that. You know, when we go to the airport, we kind of feel comfortable with that. It's a part of life. We say, it's okay. Uh, maybe we'll we'll get back together again if you're never going to see this person again hardly or whatever but and we're okay with even that and a two-week vacation is nothing right we have no problem with it at all but the narcissist is going to have a problem and they're going to take that problem out on you in the next couple of days which they're going to have a big explosion again they're going to have more hostility to you because you let them leave they're actually being angry at you for giving you uncomfortable giving them <laughs> uncomfortable emotions and letting them go. I know it doesn't make sense, but this is this is the disorder, right? That's why it's a personality disorder. <laughs> so that was a simple situation on how the narcissist handles separation. But what about when the narcissist is in a relationship, in a marriage, and the narcissist keeps saying that they're gonna leave? They're going to leave. They're going to kick you out on the curb. You're going to be out on the curb. You're going to be homeless. You're going to have no money, no place to live, right? And then the next day, it's like it never happened. And this keeps happening and happening and happening. What's that about? So the narcissist is just saying that to keep you in line, to throw you off balance, put you on the back foot, as it were, and uh, reestablish superiority. They like to be well above in superiority than you. They hope you're down here and they want to feel like they're up here. And by saying those things makes you fearful and you back down. That's what they want. Yeah, but what happens when the narcissist, well, what happens when you say, okay, let's, then let's get a divorce. Let's do this. You know, the narcissist really doesn't, didn't want to go there in the first place. That was just a tactic that they were using to knock you down. 
and they will dial that back. That probably the next day you'll say, well, let's go get, let's go to that attorney like we said last night when we were having that argument. And they'll say, they'll be like, what, what do you mean? No, that's just some, that's just, we're just arguing. People have arguments. They say things they're not, they don't mean, you know, don't be so sensitive. Don't be so reactive to everything, right? They'll put you down. Uh, but no, that, and hey, in court, that's, that is a verbal contract actually. So <laughs> there is no sensitivity about it. Uh, yeah. And honestly, I don't know what you want to do with that. <laughs> I'm okay either way. I know what I would do. <laughs> I would I would go for the divorce. And the, the narcissist is going to dial that back a little bit. But if you actually decide to leave, it's going to either be hostility, because they only have a few tools in their tool belt. It's either going to be hostility. It's either going to be, well, whatever. It doesn't mean anything to me. Or it's going to be shaming you because it was all your fault. You're at fault for this disaster that's happening now. Not me. That's the three th things that they're probably going to pull out when you decide to really leave. And it's videos like this and topics like this where it becomes more and more known the tricks and techniques that narcissists use to get their hooks into people and manipulate people and honestly ruin their lives that people learn how to deal with narcissists and not to deal with narcissists anymore. And they are leaving, I would say, uh, who knows, you know, nobody's taken any statistics on this, but I would guess as this topic becomes more and more popular and these videos get spread around more and more to more people, that more people are going to be leaving the narcissist than, than ever before. And instead of having maybe the nice guy and the nice girl sitting at home alone, it'll just be the narcissist sitting at home alone. That's the way it should be. And then they'll say, well, maybe I should try something different. Maybe I should go for that therapy everybody told me to go to. That's where we're, that's where we're headed, people. I think we are headed there eventually because we can't have a society like this forever. And it gets a little bit better every decade. All right, so I had to step away for a moment, but I'm back here. So... What is it? Why, why all this fuss about leaving and uh, leaving for, even for a short time and um, abandoning the narcissist like they feel abandoned? You're just leaving them. Hopefully, if for your sake, it's forever, but it could be just be for a couple of days. So what's the big fuss about with them? Why do they act like this? Well, because they're trying to avoid some of the most unpleasant things in the narcissist's universe. They're trying to avoid the lack of superiority supply. They feel way up here and you're way down here, hopefully. They're trying to maintain control. If you leave, they've obviously lost control. And it also, it's also about the loss of validation for them. Because you're leaving all the uh, stuff that they've done, is invalidated. It doesn't mean anything anymore. All the time that they put into you and all the narrative that they've been spending all these maybe years and decades wasted, totally invalidated. And they feel that that is them. The narcissist doesn't see things as me and them so much as whatever happens with me or with you, it is on your soul. It's personalized. Like, uh, I don't know if I want to go into it, but it just shows how personalized everything is. And so they, it's not that they did something wrong and they can correct it. It's that they did something wrong because they're broken and they should feel shameful for it. And that's the other thing that narcissists are hiding from. They have all the shame programming in their heads. And once they reach this, this situation where they're basically not a narcissist, they're not a practicing narcissist anymore, but they're still a narcissist, um, all the shame is there. That's all that's left now because they lost everything that they had been working for. They lost their servant. They lost the supply. They lost the validation. And that's all they have left. And that's... And it, that's it is, it. is it like an existential dread? It's a dread like 
um, they hate themselves, they hate the situation, they ha hate the world, they don't trust the world, they see the world is out to get them, and it's just a, it's a dark, evil spiral. And they don't want to get into that. That's why when you leave for two days, <laughs> you have a blowout argument on the way to the airport or whatever it is, because this is it. This is what they're they're trying to avoid. And they've had this. They've been through this, especially if they're older narcissists. They've been through this before. They know what the deal is. Um, and it doesn't get any better because <laughs> it triggers them on every level. It triggers the brain, you know, in those primitive levels, primitive survival levels. Like they'll talk about the reptilian brain, fight or flight. Well, that's exactly what's being triggered there because the whole world is crumbling down because they separated. And if they feel, they don't feel like you are going away and having an adventure and coming back. They feel almost like, their arm is being amputated, and it'll maybe be attached in a couple of weeks later. That's the same, that for a normal person, that would be similar to what a narcissist feels about separation. So the normal person has had healthy um, experiences with attachment when they were children. And it functions healthily when they're adults. It functions in healthy ways when we're older because it was set up correctly when we were younger. But the narcissist doesn't have that situation. Their attachment experiences when they were younger were unhealthy. And they might, like I have said before, they might have even been raised by a narcissist. So, yeah, they're going to have issues with that. So how would a narcissist get through all this stuff? Um, they might be in a, in a relationship where leaving is a normal thing. Like maybe the spouse is a trucker and they, you know, they or a pilot, and they just have to come and go, come and go. Uh, well, you know pretty much what I'm going to say. Therapy. <laughs> Therapy. Yeah, and you have to want to go. Narcissists are notorious for not wanting to go. Or when they do go, they try and twist and, and manipulate the therapist to do their bidding, whatever that is. They have to want to go and do the work that the therapist tells them to do, the way the therapist tells them to do it. And yes, medication can help too. There's mood stabilizers, antidepressants. Uh, I see, I've seen antidepressants work extremely well, uh, but not well enough to, by themselves, help the narcissist. The narcissist has to want to go and do the work. They ha and they have to be able to go too. Um, sometimes, especially in the United States, their uh, insurance companies allow, I think it's by law, they have to allow three visits to a therapist. Three visits is, is nothing, okay? Especially when you have a personality disorder that you want to get through. It's nothing. You need probably years of that at least. They did a lot to unpack. You know, watching me talk about narcissists, that there's a lot, lot for you to unpack or survivors or victims of narcissists. So imagine what it's like for the narcissist to unpack all that nonsense. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of time. And it's going to take more than three visits. So it usually doesn't happen, honestly. And a lot of that is because of what I just said, but also because they are going to be asked to do things that they usually don't do and have usually have avoided, like um, self-reflection. A lot of narcissists don't want to reflect on what they've done because it's not pretty. They don't want to go down that road, but they're going to have to go down that road if they're going to get better. And then they're going to have to tackle self-compassion, to have compassion for themselves and and talk themselves through it. Because if, if you don't love yourself enough to go through this stuff, then you're not going to do it. You're not going to go through therapy because it's, it's not a, a walk in the park. you got to love yourself enough to do that. And then you have to be compassionate about yourself enough to, 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 to get through the shame and the pain, honestly. And, 
they're not really used to that. And they're honestly, they're not sure if they want to do that. And another thing, a lot of narcissists see emotions generally as a scary thing. So, and it's probably because a lot of the emotions they generate are negative emotions, hate, um, anger, pain, you know, all those painful emotions. So when they get emotions that are anything less than, you know, good, they're like, oh no, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I can't deal with that. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that. And, but you have to deal with that. As a normal person, we've all dealt with that. And that's how we got through to the other side. That's how you grow as a normal adult person. So a, lo a lot of you <clears throat> may not have had the greatest upbringing. And, and it might not have been a narcissist, but it could have been. But so how come you're not a narcissist? How come you're not insufferably broken and helping to break other people? <laughs> Uh, it's because you can self-reflect. It's because you can develop compassion and have practiced compassion upon yourself. You can do these things. And so now you feel safe in the world. A lot safer than a narcissist does. A narcissist sees the world as a dangerous place and everybody's out to get them. You might have started out there if you lived with some, somebody like that. But now you can, you did the work where you didn't even know that that was the work. You, you didn't speak to a therapist, perhaps very likely, but you looked at your past. You looked how you made decisions. You looked at how, you know, when, when you, you look with a narcissist, you live with a narcissist, you see a lot and you, you kind of wonder because it's all like a magic act. So you're, you're trying to decipher how they did all that. How they started, how the day started out nice and the birds were chirping and everything was perfect. And then they had this crazy argument that ruined the day, that got your stomach in knots, that made you hate your life right now. How did that, how did, and it was an argument over something you can't even remember. How did that happen? There's a lot of you going back and trying to figure things out. Self-reflection. Uh, and that's another big part of it. And they're not, they're, the narcissist is not going to do that. They're not going to go back over and try and figure out why an argument happened. Not, it, these are just very difficult things for them, and the, they usually don't want to go through it. But you can go through it and have gone through it, and that's why you don't have these panic attacks or these anxiety attacks and, and anxiety raisings. <laughs> as you get closer to some kind of uh, departure. And so basically, um, being ostracized, kicked out, is, abandoned, is one of the biggest fears that a narcissist has out of everything. And it's not something that they haven't seen before, especially if they're older. So, yeah. Look forward to that when <laughs> with the narcissist and when you go to finally leave the narcissist, that's the stuff that's going to happen. And they will probably try and pull you back. They will try and pull you because they're trying to get back that narrative. They're trying to get back that narcissistic supply. That That's what a lot of people call it, the narcissistic supply. I call it the superiority supply because they, they just love being up here and feeling better than everybody else. Um, and they're trying to get, get back the narrative because you took the narrative someplace they didn't want it to go and it, it, but they can get you back. They can get back the narrative. They can get back control and they can get back that superiority supply, right? They didn't really want you to go. Oh, they just wanted you to, to be a servant. They just wanted you to be nothing. And they just wanted you to be just nothing uh, along with them in a way that they felt comfortable with. And this is the, the push-pull of the hate love-hate relationship that you are going to be in when you are in a relationship with a narcissist. And I wish you good luck with that. I've been there. <laughs> I've done it. 
um, you know, my mom was a narcissist and it was always that hate, love, hate, love, hate, love situation. That's just what they have. I don't feel guilty for having it like that because that was imposed upon me. She was a narcissist before I was born. So I was going to inherit a hate, love relationship. And that's just the way it is. Made for a lot of difficult Mother's Days. So, uh, how to pick out a Mother's Day card um, for your mom when it's a hate love relationship. That's a whole that's a whole video in itself. But this is what they fear at the tip of everything. Being left, being kicked out, abandoned. So that's what it looks like to leave a narcissist for a little time or forever. That's the cycle. Don't get pulled back into it when they say they're going to change and they're going to make up for it and they're going to treat you really nice. Don't get suckered back in. A lot of people have been suckered back in. How many times are you going to get suckered back in? When you're out, get as much distance as you can. Like I say, the three distances, physical distance, psychological distance. That's the second one. <laughs> and mental distance, right? The mental distance is, is pretty important, too, because you're not thinking about them all the time. You're not running those arguments and regrets in your head all the time. And the psychological portion is you don't have that uh, shame programming and that personalization programming in your head. And the physical distance is the most important because that will uh, let you do all the rest of it. So when you get out, stay out. If you want to, <laughs> I hope this helps you. I hope you get on with your great life and we're all getting uh, on with our great lives by spreading all this information to the world and letting people know how to avoid these, these dangers in life, honestly. And anybody will tell you, it is really actually dangerous. It's, it might sound like, oh, you're over, oh, no, no, no. When you waste years or decades with a person, it's, it takes its toll. Because you can lose family members, but part of your life has been lost. You're never going to get that back. So think about it. Okay, people, I hope this helps you. Uh, I hope this helps your life. Let's get on with our great lives. Boom.